transparent arm. So what? Uh... <laughs> Take her hand. Now, let me tell you about the Cassia. I see. She quivers and she makes a weak attempt to slip out of your hands. <laughs> this is going to be so cheesy. <laughs> oh, buckle up, kids. Oh, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have studied thousands of books. You wish to learn everything there is to learn. I am dazzled by your keen mind and curiosity. She listens in silence, her eyelashes lowered and her head slightly bowed. A barely noticeable smile tugs at the corners of her mouth. <laughs> I find myself smitten with your raised chin, your refined manners, and the stern look in your eyes when you scold me. <laughs> She listens in silence, her eyelashes like a slight smile, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> when I hold you in my embrace, I feel like I am home. <laughs> oh, a small smile at the corners of her mouth. Your eyes shine like the rubies against a sunset sky, and your skin and hair are like fresh snow. Never before have I seen anything so beautiful. <laughs> a small smile at the corners of her mouth. <laughs> Mokmon looks top. I, oh, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Crimson tears stream down her cheeks when she's smiling, and hers is a smile of joy and freedom. <laughs> Jace's keep going, I'm almost there. <laughs> I can see your colors, so pure, and I'm afraid I might scare them away. Only when I stand before you fully dressed do I feel utterly bare and defenseless. You have captured my heart, made me fall in love with you, and shown me how you love your myself. I know not what the future holds for us, but I'm willing to take a risk and find out together with you, my love. She covers your hand with hers and her knees buckle treacherously. Her knees buckle treacherously from hand holding chat. I told you, the kiss, dude, she would have had like smoke come out of her ears like a Looney Tunes character. <laughs> you are exhausted. Come, I shall lay you in my bed and stay to guard your slumber. Oh, Makavon Luck, that's... <laughs> she looks abashed, but does not withdraw her hands. That sounds wonderful! No one has guarded my sleep before. You will be the first. <laughs> oh, this whole thing. Missed opportunity. No, I think, we got, I think we got a great opportunity. I think everything worked fine. People on the bridge, sir, is there any reason we just stopped for 12 hours? Shut up. <laughs> Words uh, cannot describe how boring the bridge let's break is up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a breakup button. <laughs> Travel says, what did I just walk into? The best part, Travel. Captain, the intercom was on for the whole conversation. <laughs> I know. Turn up the volume. <laughs> it was reminds me, what was the... <laughs> what was the guy that was on Futurama? And he was always like, Kip, I have laid with a woman. Alert the crew. <laughs> <laughs> like it just that just role play that guy play doing uh, rogue trader zap Brannigan, yes ah uh, the ship is fat like a steakhouse but she handles like a bistro Muck von Luck, how wonderful it is that I found you here. Uncontrollable anxiety washes over your body, causing you to lose your breath. Cassia notices this, closes her eyes, and you're released from the grip of emotions that are not your own. Please forgive me. My powers are sometimes too insistent in their attempts to break free from my control. 
You have made great strides in learning how to keep them at bay. I commend your perseverance. I came to deliver good tidings. I've spoken with the house navigators through the Atlas. Of late, I could feel with increasing clarity how our connection is growing stronger. Despite the descent in our midst, House Urselio has been able to keep a precarious equilibrium. Thanks in part to your unexpected arrival on Urak 5 and the resolution of the conflict of the Dargonis reception. Not all Orcelioses confer, uh, concur with your decisions, but none can deny the impact that you and no one else have had on the house's present state of affairs. Cassia nods gratefully, lowers her gaze, and clasps her hands together. There is more I wish to tell you. It is about the visions that I have come to experience at an increasing rate during warp jumps. The same visions come to me again and again and again, as if I am going mad. For you see, these visions are about me, the Atlas, and Tisiphone Orcelio, the house's previous Novator. I have seen Tisiphone's experiments, the ones that involved the no uh, navigators from the Sethala branch, which uh, she was rumored to have destroyed for her disobedience. But the visions told me altogether a different story, one where the Sethalos helped Tisiphone create the Atlas, and she Im they immediately, uh, sorry, they vanished immediately after the experiments were done with. Perhaps I can, no. I know I can find a way to the Palace of the Atlas if I recreate Tisiphone's journey from my visions. A real palace, not the psychophysical uh, illusion to which us cellular navigators can reach out. I've always had a feeling that it truly exists in our world. Now, however, I know it with absolute certainty. I've been informed that House Orcelia will soon convene its Grand Council. Would it not be better to wait for it to finish first? I cannot shake a certain foreboding about the upcoming meeting in the incor incorporeal palace of the Atlas. Troubling mirages have plagued my mind for many nights now. Voices calling and cursing my name, and the more I use the Atlas, the clearer the visions become and the louder the voices grow. And the further my powers wane. I am certain that all of the house is experiencing the same, for all of us are connected. I can sense my family's fear. House Urcelio is doomed to perish in darkness should I fail to discover the reason why the Atlas is weakening. And that reason, I believe it is hidden somewhere in the visions of Tisiphone. What makes you so sure you will find the way to this physical manifestation of the Atlas? I saw Tisiphone experience an epiphany in a dream, just like my visions come to me on our travels through the warp. She beheld a planet hidden beneath roiling warp storms. The world promised her great power, so Tisiphone gathered the Sethalus for most of our followers to go on a suicidal journey throughout the Tempest. I know not the details of what happened on this planet, but it was there that Sethalus sacrificed themselves for an experiment of some kind, and it was there that House Orcelio obtained its star Starway Atlas. For the first time ever, I had an opportunity to find answers to the questions that my mentors so deftly avoided. Why did Tisiphone choose me? What is the Atlas? Is it true that House Orcelio's past is drenched in blood? Please, Muck Von Locke, do not snap this tautly drawn string of destiny. My destiny. Journey with me into Tisiphone's wake to the distant stars. I shall help you, Lady Cassia. She breathes a sigh of relief, but the look in her ruby eyes quickly darkens again. The house is still watching me, both the renegades and the loyalists. I doubt that any of them will agree even to a brief armistice for the sake of learning the truth about the Atlas's origins. And I do not wish to see House Orcelio lose even one more life to another fratricidal skirmish. No, I shall go after the answers about our past on my own. Then it is best we go alone. Her shoulders relax a little. Thank you for understanding, Road Trader. Now permit me to take my leave. I must start preparing for the journey. From what I've been able to glean, we must first travel to the... Her ruby red eyes widen in astonishment. The Orcelio Prophecy System. Odd that. Could it be that the historical records are lying? And Kaelin Orcelio is not whom the star system is named after. Either way, that was the system from which Tisiphone embarked on her journey, and we are going to follow in her long-forgotten footsteps. Okay... What? Wait, what? I was trying to... Wait, I hope that's loading the star map. It looked like my guy turned and walked the other way. Okay, it's fine. Alright, where is... Dargonus? Okay, we're here. Alright, uh... You know, I haven't opened the colony thing in a while. Let's see... Dirty bureaucracy... Uh, the requisitioning of religious ties from other worlds in the guise of the Ecclesiarchy gives the opportunity to keep a portion of the proceeds. Plus three profit factor. 
Uh, but this will cause unquenchable greed. The rogue trader has been contacted by a high-ranking administratum official who previously helped with reclaiming a relic of St. Cognatius from House Corda. He enjoyed the generous bribes and would like some more. In exchange for the riches requested, he promises that an error will creep into the administratum's calculations so that all provisions from the agri-world of Mercus Alpha will be shipped to Dargonus instead of the Navy's orbitable fortress. Cemetery of the Faithful. Flagship gets bonus evasion. Blocks the ability to build maglev railways. Construction of routes that allow the delivery of relics to every corner. Requimator. Whenever the wearer kills their target with a melee attack, all enemies around suffer damage. A uh, thousand face relic. Benevolent protection. All allies get more health. The monks demand a great work. Thousands of faithful with skin entirely covered in scars in the form of lines from scripture. Ah! What? Why are you so crazy? Alright, let's get dirty bureaucracy for now. Alright, Janus. Uh, Science of Virtue. That wasn't there last time. Eyes of Joyous. The word Cyrity increased by plus one against demons and for each rank of dogmatic. That's pretty insane if you were dogmatic. Psy rating is like a multiplier for your psychic powers. All of the corruption on Janus originated in the sophistries of unholy scholars. Reverend Hieronymus Deloroso, a preacher of the cult of St. Drusus, is going to visit. Janus to perform a procedure of blessed delimination of the agri-complexes and demarcation of the irrigation systems. Instead of relying on the advice of godless genitors, he will be guided by the wise examples set in hagiographies of the saints. The teachings of righteous scriptures and the pious sacred geometry of the iconographers. May faith triumph over the sophistication of soulless metal. Uh, blocks you from building the Rose of Zamarkin. Do I care about that? I do. I do care about that. All right, Dargonus. Got some grenades. Uh, ship is like yelling about something. Say decree on diligence lowers complacency. That's oh, here's some stuff. Uh, oh, profit factor plus four. The due date of the tithe approaches, and by using corrupted schematics, it's possible to keep both psychers and the gold. <laughs> yeah, we were gonna sell use of people. Psych. Uh, praising the masses, the patronage of architects and other artists will allow the creation of amazing and monumental works uh, marked with the road trader's likeness. Yes, make a statue of me. Uh, Lord's Presence is required at Phoebo 6. Oh boy. Let's see, Holy Servitude. Provide Drusians with convicts as pilgrims for the Arcs. A marvelous compact weapon in the form of a ring that allows the wearer to use a melta scorching area attack once per combat. Blocks the project Extractium Metallica. Um, the master artisans of the Adeptus Mechanicus deep in the mines of Phoebo 6 where thundering seismic cannons will tear through rock to pressure sores. Five extractiums. Um. Hmm. One of the projects are completed. Earthbreaker. The blessed hydraulic installation of the Adeptus will crush the greedy bowels of the earth, freeing the priceless minerals. Pure blood. Five projects. Minus three. What? All right, I'll get the profit factor one. All right, Kiava Gamma, last one. Uh, mag trains, weapons. Hmm. Uh, Planet's manufacturums are only as efficient as its logistical system. Lex mechanics predict a major growth in the world's overall manufacturing output if haulers and airships make way for a powerful mag train speeding along a web of long distance railways. Do it. All right, do I need to go to Dargonus or anything? Okay, so that's Dargonus, right? Yeah, and I need to go there for that one quest in my log. I don't remember what it was, but that's the step it was on. All right, uh, Dargonus. There we go. I had to find the right spot it let me click on it. All right, uh, land, and yeah, bring that one crew. Hello, hey, Jabbers. How you doing? Chip wants blood? <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, I posted that picture of him laying on that stack of blankets last night, and he was still on that when I went to bed, like, five hours later, and I woke up and he was on it. And I was like, dude, have you moved? Like, I assume at some point he got up, used the bathroom, ate some food, then just came back to it. But it's like, he was, every time I've seen him in, like, 16 hours, he's been in that spot. Up until this morning when my wife opened uh, the blinds on a window to let a sunbeam in. And then he, he's like, oh, okay. And then he got up and went to that. Throne preserve us. What happened here? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand aside. No need for uh, to crowd around. Governor Drivestem will take care of everything. This is ridiculous. Such a thing happening right in the Rogue Trader's Palace. You are confronted by the sight of dead bodies at the entrance to the palace. The corpses have been hauled into a pile. Some are dressed in the uniforms of palace wardens, while others are arrayed in the clothing typical of the Dargonus nobility. Upon seeing you, the young enforcer stands at attention and swallows noisily. His voice trembles as he says, Your lordship, we're honored by your presence. Examine the assailants. Observation. They are a rare, high-functioning servitor specimens present among the expired units. Such specimens are traditionally bestowed upon the noble houses that are most loyal to the sacred fellowship of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The augmetics of the deceased do differ from implants ordinary people wear. Hi! What's up? Hi. What? Why, why are you yelling at me? What is it? I don't know what it is, but something's very wrong. Oh, I left a blanket in that chair. I was using that blanket yesterday. Yeah, you made it spin. It didn't spin on its own. You good? No? Not done yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Abelard frowns. As far as I know, House Caprac has received such servitors from the Crimson Priesthood as gifts in the past, although this is my first time seeing one myself. Point at the dead bodies. What is this mess? You see, your lordship. Those people wanted to attack... The warden clears his throat. Second Lieutenant of the Palace Guard, Elam White, reporting. Shortly before you arrived, we averted an assassination attempt on the rogue trader. The palace soldiers detected intruders and engaged them in combat. Where is the court chancellor, Clementia Worsarian? I think she is with the rest of House Worsarian. Detained to the, in the throne room, that is. Governor Drivestem has gathered all of Dargonus' nobility there to pronounce a guilty verdict against House Worsarian. Why is the governor not here to greet the rogue trader? I do not know your lordship. Perhaps he is... The guard throws a fearful gaze at Abelard. You can probably find him in the throne room where the governor intends to put House Rosarian on trial. I will take my leave. The bodies bear multiple wounds. It's evident that they died recently. My house would be there was a crumpled up letter in the inside pocket of the assailant's blood-soaked jacket. Bloodstained letter. Also, chip. The letter is soaked with blood. Only a portion of the text is readable through the crimson blotches. Full and discreet. Keep away from the lords and ladies. You must look like a noble to the servants and wardens. Do not engage in conversation with anyone. Your task is to avoid exposing yourself ahead of time and let the Worsarians get away while the wardens are busy guarding the road trader. We'll see. Let me through. I have an appointment with Chancellor Clementia... Chancellor Clementia Worsarian. 
Oh, my apologies, my lord, but you cannot go any further. Governor drive stems orders. This is ridiculous. I shall complain. <laughs> okay, Karen. <laughs> Move over. Let his lordship the rogue trader through. I humbly beg your pardon, your lordship. Daco, thank you so much for the prime. Appreciate your support. Welcome. Your lordship, please come this way. Your lordship, it's an honor. Governor Urban drives him, seems to materialize out of thin air, so suddenly does he emerge from the crowd. I regret such unfortunate circumstances have occasioned the rogue trader's visit to the capital. Clementia tries to take a step toward you, but the warden nearby stops her. Her face is veiled with fear and weariness. Your lordship, you are here. Please, you must hear us out. Drive stem. The rogue trader is undoubtedly here to listen to the testimony of each and every one of us and to punish the traitors. The governor's words directed at Clementia are harsh. They are echo echoed by the scornful sneers and whispers of the assembled nobles. We have known each other for many decades now, and we have had our fair share of disagreements. But do you really think my flesh and blood would trample upon the very definition of honor and loyalty? Abelard's voice is quivering with rage. The governor sweeps his gaze over Abelard and then replies, a faint shadow of a doubt in his eyes. We have evidence implicating them, Abelard. I am sure his lordship will arrive at a fair ruling. What are the charges against House Worsarian? Disruption of logistical lines, bribery of Adeptus Administratum officials, a document forgery, and organizational of heretical insurrectionists. On top of evidently devastating economic impact this has had on your protectorate, these criminal acts have impeded the delivery of the Imperial Tithe, which in turn has drawn the Administratum's attention. An esteemed member of the Adeptus Arbides is expected to have arrived on Dargonus shortly, and before they do, we are obligated to identify and punish those responsible. What happened on Dargonus in my absence? When we caught wind of the rumors of your disappearance, we patiently awaited for news of your return, but then Dargonus was struck by a series of terrible events. The first was sabotage of logistics that hampered shipments. The mass unrest spread across the entire planet, and then minor noble houses began squabbling among themselves, trying to pin the blame on their rivals. We took great pains to calm them down and managed to quash the revolt, but not without some outside help, unfortunately. These events have also been overshadowed by the... I'm ashamed to say it even aloud in front of you, your lordship, the rumors circulating among the higher houses. The governor stammers, then takes a deep breath. Some were calling for Theodora's true heir to be installed as head of your house, Kunrad Voigtvir, the guy who <laughs> was there when she uh, died. Not all of your subjects have forgotten his past efforts for the benefit of the trade protectorate. Drive Sim stops talking, watching you with a tense expression. When the investigation was launched, the evidence led us to the Worsarians. Why are there dead bodies at the entrance to my palace? Your lordship, I humbly beg your pardon. Drive stem bowels once again trying to placate you. You see, right before your arrival, the palace guard discovered a plot to assassinate you. Unfortunately, the malefactors were disposed of before they could cause you any harm. Clementia, I wish to hear your account. Your lordship, House Rosarian denies all charges laid against it. She glances at the governor with defiance. These last few months have indeed been trying for Dargonus, but we have done our best to remedy the situation. My family's every effort was focused on stabilizing the capital's logistics and economy, so much so that we failed to notice the web of intrigue unfolding behind our backs. Drive stem, you aren't accusing one of Dargonus's leading noble houses of treason without airtight evidence, are you? Of course I have evidence, your lordship. The investigation has established that members of the Worsarian family, though, uh, which is responsible for both Dargonus's fleet and its logistics, used their contacts and influence to forge a host of documents in order to undermine the planet's supply routes and economy, thus fermenting unrest among the inhabitants. Allow me to introduce my son, Cornelius. The governor pl points to the lanky young man standing beside him. He bows curtly, but avoids meeting your eye. Cornelius holds a prestigious position at the Administratum Palace, and it is thanks to him that we managed to identify and trace the entire chain of forged documents. The investigation leads us to the perpetrators who admitted to acting on the orders of the members of House Rosarian. It was they who were intent on spreading the idea of restoring the title of Rogue Trader to the true heir. The young man is shrouded in a mist of gray and blue. Sickly shadows of fear are flooding or fluttering around him. Cassie speaks so quietly, only you can hear her. Speak to the heads of houses present. Do you support the governor's accusations? The aristocrats in attendance exchange glances. The noble lords averting their gazes and the noble ladies hiding behind their fans. No one is willing to be the first to answer. Macarius Sarbach. Over his many years of service, Governor Drivesim earned Theodora's trust, and he holds his high office for a reason. 
Sarbak's tone is stern and imperious. On behalf of House Sarbak, I support his accusations. Gaprak, your lordship, Governor Drivestem has always faithfully served the rogue traders of House Von Valancius and concerned itself with the future of your trade dynasty. So, Gaprak, House Gaprak thinks his charges against House Rosarian to be sound. The Augmentics hide Toriana's emotion, but her voice sounds tightly timorous. Clementia Rosarian, I humbly ask you to allow me to speak in defense of my family's honor. The evidence provided by the governor is utterly false. I cannot refute it, but I can say with confidence no one from my family has ever tried to forge documents in the Adeptus Administratum, let alone undermine the economy of your capital. Um, hmm. Sabotaging logistics, riots, conspiracy... This case appears to be flimsy. I wish to learn more before I make my final decision. As you wish, your lordship. The governor inclines his head in a stiff bow. Speak to me when you're ready to announce your verdict. Thank you for your willingness to help, Lord Captain. I'm certain that all the charges are false, and I would be grateful for your help in exposing them as such. I think you should speak to everyone present, the noble lords and ladies. Oh. The Court of Muck Law. Alright, quick save. So the Versarians have been likable through the game. Don't really want to kill them. All right, the Caprax. The lords and ladies, sumptuously dressed in the colors of House Caprac, are standing in a half circle around Toriana and her son Vincent. The bodies and faces of almost every member of this dynasty are covered in large, ornate augmentics. Toriana Caprac curtsies to you. Her mechanical voice sounds distant and indifferent. Greetings, your lordship. May the Omnissiah grant you understanding. With a click, her visor oculars swivel to the Seneschal. Abelard, it must be difficult for you to be here under these circumstances with your house standing accused of such a grave crime. My family, Lady Toriana, has yet to be found guilty of anything. That verdict is for the rogue trader to reach. I have examined the bodies of the assailants that were killed today. All of them were high-functioning servitors. Such servitors are only employed by families close to the Adeptus Mechanicus, isn't that so? It is impossible to read Toriana's emotions and her heavily augmented face, but her sudden turn toward her family betrays confusion and surprise. Perplexed whispers bounce from one family member to another. Impossible. We came here by ourselves without any servitors. We know nothing about it. Your Lordship, thank you for informing us of this. You are absolutely right. My house has indeed been endowed with high-functioning servitors, a blessing for those who revered the Omnissiah. But today, none of our house members were accompanied by them. I found this note on the bodies of one of the attackers. What are your thoughts on it? Toriana's mechanical fingers grip the paper. Officially, high-functioning servitors are employed by my house and my house alone. If such units were to attack the rogue trader, suspicion would instantly fall on the Caprax. I assume that this is what the Rosarians intended to happen, but they did not expect the servitors would have this letter on them. Do you think the accusations against the Rosarian family are true? I would not take such a responsibility upon myself and rule on their guilt, your lordship. I do think Governor Drivesim's accusations are worthy of consideration, however. In your opinion, which nobles might have reason to be party to such a conspiracy? She thinks for several moments before replying. Pardon my bluntness, your lordship, but I will answer truthfully. It could be anyone. Greed, fear, and ideals can drive even the most loyal subjects to do the unthinkable. I take my leave. Okay, it's kind of cool seeing them get uncomfortable about the, uh, the bit that we found out. Um, the quiet humming of server motors is occasionally interrupted by clicking coming from somewhere within the servitor. Reporting on current actions, data extraction from the memory repository of the servitor will take three standard Terran cycles. Data decoding uh, will take 30 standard Terran cycles. Sarbax. Before bowing, Sarbax scrutinizes you with a bitter, judgmental look. Your Lordship. Sarbak, looking like a younger copy of his father, stands at a slight distance, close to his mother. An expensive yet understated dress serves to highlight the dazzling beauty of Macarius' wife, Regina Sarbak. That's it? I can't talk to them? Oh, here we go. The members of Al Sarbak, led by Macarius, all bear striking resemblance to one another with their slender builds and stern looks. They bow to you almost in unison. Mmm. Hello. Hello, Lefty River. What game is he playing? This is Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. It is a CRPG by Alcat Games. Same, same company that made the Pathfinder games. Um, Do you believe the Warsarians are guilty? 
Certainly, he replies without hesitation. Governor Drive Sam possesses proof of their guilt, and they have no means by which to refute it. Even if I were to entertain the idea that the Orsarians are being framed, how much longer would their house have lasted anyway, if it is so ill-prepared for treachery? He addresses Abelard with a slightly mocking